You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, this is I Am Refocused Radio. We're here once again. And man, we have two special guests real quick tonight. We're going to have our awesome guests, Crystal Davis and also Brennan White Green. And today's topic is who told you this? And uh, we're going to just kind of dissect the part of Jeremiah 29, 11, verses 14. I'll read it real fast. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, <clears throat> and will bring you back to the place from which I carry you into the exile. Man, I mean, I just read that again, got uh, goosebumps. <laughs> and uh, Ms. Brenda, I'm gonna start with you, but when I first was talking about this before we started recording was, I love how Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you. But it was interesting, it doesn't stop there. Because mm-hmm. there's so many places where it's talking about some kind of setback, some kind of issue, some kind of hardship that happens. And... Chris would have a good point earlier too. Both y'all did actually. Is a beginning statement, but then there's a process of what happens when something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. But then at the very end, though, mm-hmm. it's like a plan from start to end. At the end, it works out. Mm-hmm. And it works out because he makes it super clear. He said, you will seek me, and this is verse 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. Mm -hmm. That's my, like, exciting moment right there. He's like, I'll bring you back. Mm -hmm. So I would say whoever's listening to this, wherever you are in life, no matter how far you think you are away from God, if you go back to him, he's going to bring you back. Because we can move out of line for a season. But as long as we seek the source. Yes. Because it's funny when you when you seek the source, when you seek the truth, how things start to make sense. Because mm-hmm. in the midst of chaos, things don't make sense. That's right. That's right. But when you look back and investigate, put the pieces together, mm-hmm. then voila, all of a sudden, it starts to take shape. Right. And the picture becomes clear. Yeah. So I'm not gonna hold the mic. I want I want you both to, uh, to chime in. But I'll start with you, Miss Brenda. I was reading this, uh, Shamar, and it say, "For I know the plans I have for you," and I like the word "declare the Lord" and the, and the explanations plan to prosper you and not to harm you. So it lets you know that Jeremiah was going through something, and so he's he. I'm letting you know that I know the plans I have for you. I, I did this because I love you, and I, I, I would never do anything to harm you. And there's security so, come in that. Come on, I, I'm trying yeah. to let you know that wasn't me. That was something that you let come up on you. Who told you this? Mm-hmm. Because that is not my plan. And so he's letting him know, Declare the Lord. Ain't not ain't no ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. I know the plans I have for you, and it's not to harm you. He said, plan to give you hope. That's the plan. 
Amen. The plan is to give you hope. When you think you can't get it, when you think about me, you're going to have hope. And not to harm you. So when people come to you with questions and, and, and doubt and telling you that, oh, this happened to you, uh, you you're sick today. The doctor said you got cancer. The doctor said you're, you're fighting diabetes. The doctor said that uh, you're not going to be able to see in three months. Your vision is going bad. God said, I didn't do that to harm you. I know the plans I have for you, and it is not to harm you. And that's what we have to know in life is that God knew us before we was in our mother's womb. He said that before you was even born, I knew what you were going to be like. And it was so that you could prosper. Everything that God does for us is for prosper. He made everything that we can use on earth. If you think about it, he made the ground that we can till. He made the trees that we can eat off of. He made animals so we can eat meat, so we can have some kind of protein in us. Mm -hmm. He knew what, exactly what we had to have. He knew we needed water for our body. So I ain't, everything I made. It's all in the plan. I made it to you, for you. Yeah. So your He's body very detailed. don't have to, come on now. He, he doesn't I just randomly this. make blobs and say, okay, y'all figure it out. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I laid it. I laid the foundation for you. And it wasn't to harm you, because if it was, the earth would have been dark. Man, you already said something there. That, dang, that, yeah, because I'm going to let you, Crystal, chime in. But there's one thing I want to uh, highlight also, and that's verse 12. Then you will call on me mm -hmm. and come and pray to me. So it's like, all right, who are you calling when things go wrong? That's one thing. But who also are you praying to? Because what I'm getting from that is in order for there to be some kind of connection, you have to call on the right source, mm -hmm. not just call on anything. Not, in other words, not just try any solution. Or any temporary substitutes. Mm -hmm. You have to call on something that is actually reliable. Mm -hmm. So I'll throw it to you, you, Crystal. I would say that's good because I circled that before you even said it. I was um, in 12, in verse 12. But before, I was just kind of going back over it. And I was looking at 11 where we started off. But right before it, it, said, it talks about it was to fulfill a good promise. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, oh, all this is a promise that God made. So, yeah, when it talks about who told you this and who mm -hmm. told you that, remember, God has a promise and God is, his word does not go void. So he's not going to let down his promise. He made this promise. But in 12, like you said, then you will call on me and come and pray to me. He said, and I will listen. Mm -hmm. He said, I have an ear. I can hear. Mm -hmm. You have an ear to hear. Mm -hmm. And then he also talks about how that whenever um, whenever you seek me and find me, you will seek me. I mean, with your all your heart. Mm -hmm. So that means you're not going to come to me like you come to your friends, side ways, mm -hmm. halfway, you coming to me all the way. Because you know what? I don't know who told you that I'm not worthy of my promise. Mm -hmm. I don't know who told you I wasn't worthy to stand on solid ground with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. listen, I'm here to tell you my word, my truth. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. So I knew you before I formed you. Mm -hmm. And so if I had a promise, I'm going to take you all the way through it. Mm -hmm. one, one thing too I want to add real quick. Something that stuck out is... Uh, Whose words are you committed to? Yes, that's good. Because <laughs> there's words of what the world will say Jesus. you are and what you should be. But then there's words that God says who you are, what you should be. Mm -hmm. So the topic that we came up with tonight, uh, who told you this? It's funny because in school, they teach you how to verify the source mm -hmm. when they, whenever you're doing certain projects or whatever, especially like, you know, reading a book or whatever, doing a book report back in the day. You know, I don't, I'm sure they probably do that now, but you always have to verify the source. Mm -hmm. But 
we have to understand the world is is always consuming. Mm -hmm. So we don't always remember giving and serving because what I'm trying to get at is in verse 12 when it says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me. That shows to me personally that uh, it's a time where you have to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you're not humble, then how can you come to him full with your full heart yeah. and say, you know what? I'm going to own this one. Mm. You know, I'm not going to shift blame anymore. <clears throat> I'm not going to uh, point out everybody else who messed me up. Mm. I'm going to own it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I'm not trying to remix the scripture, but no, no, if I can it. put in today's uh, time yeah. until you own it completely yes. Mm -hmm. yes. and say, okay, time is up. I'm not going to make excuses anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to blame everybody. Mm -hmm anymore i'm gonna own this and say it's me yeah ownership because yeah. when you own something then mm -hmm. you're responsible mm -hmm. yes for it all yes and until you're willing to be responsible for it all mm -hmm. you can't come to him with a full complete heart right it will just be partial right but the kicker is Ooh, the plans that he has for us mm -hmm requires our full commitment yes. all the way in because you just said it you can't be halfway there mm -hmm. you either going to believe his plan mm -hmm. or you're going to believe none of it mm -hmm. you can't have it both mm -hmm. ways when it's convenient for you mm -hmm. and i see shamar too i see the the reverse because the reverse is that our topic is who told you. So I know you done heard something. And yeah, you listened to it and you fell. But then as you were talking, I wrote down, confess. I got to come back to you and I got to confess, God, that you were right. <laughs> that all the time you told me that you knew the plans you had for me. You were right. I was listening to someone else, and I thought that I was going to get this promotion. So I stabbed my coworker in the back. I went and said things about him that I shouldn't have said so I could get that position because someone else told me that I was better than him. Yeah. But God, you told me that you already knew the plans that you had for me. And so my blessings wasn't keen on the position that he had. That position belonged to him. And now, Lord, I believe what you said, that I know the plans that you have for me, and it's not to harm me. So now it's confession time. I confess, Lord, that I messed up. And going back as I was reading this, I thought about Cain and Abel. Is God just want us to confess that we messed up because he already know the plans that he had for us. What Cain would have had, what the grounds would have had not grew perfect and kept getting harvest if he would have confessed to God? <laughs> do, you, do you think so? God would have forgiven him. Yeah. And that's what God wants to do. I want you to come back. Because when you come back to me, I will listen. And that's the key. Because when you go back and you seek him with all your heart, yes, he says, I will be found by you. Yeah, I'm waiting on so, you to come home. So, You've been looking for leftovers hmm. when you could have had the whole meal. Mm -hmm. mm. Jesus. And when you, when he, when he is found by you, yeah. mm -hmm. the part, the ending of uh, verses 14, I'll gather you from all the nations Jesus. and places where I banish you, mm -hmm. declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carry you into exile. Yeah. That's very interesting it's like my favorite phrase because that means no matter how 
much we deviate from the plan and mess up, if you go back, he will bring you back to the very place. You're right. Where you messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Living because because yeah, prior to that timeline, mm -hmm. everything is going well with the plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Until you broke the contract. Yeah. There you go. But even when you have breached it, <laughs> he's willing to bring you back mm -hmm. to that point yeah. to fix it. Yeah. And then I got you. I, you said something that that I really like because you said the contract. But people rip up contracts all the time. But when you make a covenant with God, He never forgives His covenant. Just like he told, he said, it will always be a, a rainbow because I have made a covenant with you. So no matter what goes on in the world, it will always be a rainbow in the sky because that's a significant sign of my covenant. And so a covenant and a contract is two different things. People go back on contracts all the time, but a covenant with God, he never breaks his covenant. I will be here waiting on you because I already told you, I know the plans I have for you, and it wasn't to harm you. And I like what you said about the bringing you back out of where I have banished you at. So where you at, it's dead, because you banished me. I didn't banish you. So it's dead, nothing is growing, nothing is working out. You go for, go for an interview, they don't wanna hire you. You go to the bank, they don't wanna give you a loan. You go, you, go to, you and your wife, you, you wanna get married, but now she wants a divorce. Come on, nothing is working out for you because I have banished you because you banished me, I didn't banish you. But since you banished me, you left me. So I left you where you left me at. But when you come back to me, then everything will come from dead to life. Because he would fix it. Because he's not like us. If it was us and we had our way, if someone cut the cord, we probably would put the time and effort to fix it. But he does the opposite. He takes the time and commitment to not just fix it, but to restore what went missing. Yeah. So, top it to now, wrap it up. Who told you this? That's something you should ask yourself throughout the day to verify where the source is coming from. Because we can be distracted by anything and believe just anything. But if we can verify what it said in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have. That means the plans that he has will never expire. Because he says, the plans I have, not the plans I used to have, mm -hmm. but the plans I still have today, even though last week mm -hmm. or last year, you, <laughs> you messed everything up and went your way. I still waited for you to come back. Mm -hmm. And when he waited for us to come back, he was still faithful to not just allow us to survive the storm not just rebuild from all the destruction but most importantly know the truth of who he is mm. because who told you this can also be lies yeah. and if we're not careful yeah. If we're not careful, we believe the lie and not the truth. It's one thing I want to say. Uh, I always, sometimes I have an opportunity to say this, but it's, it's a favorite quote I had uh, growing up in school, uh, sophomore year in high school. And it's a quote by Blaise Pascal. And I always try to say it when I can because it's, it's very, I think, in line with the topic. He said, in faith, there's enough light for those who want to believe and enough shadows to blind those who don't. And uh, I had someone on, I think last week on the show, and I shared that quote, and the guy said something very interesting. He said something, I'm going to paraphrase it, but he said, uh, 
based on his own life experience. If you don't believe the truth, don't go for the truth, you end up living in the shadows. And I feel like if you don't seek God and make him the number one source in your life, you end up living in the shadows. Yeah, that's good. Because he's the truth. Mm-hmm. He's the light. He's the way. And he's the ultimate plan. But if you want to waste your life away, you end up staying away from the plan. But that's the very plan that can give you hope, a future. Hope for the moment, future to me is tomorrow. Tomorrow <laughs> is is progress. Mm-hmm. So his plan is progress mm-hmm. for your life. So twenty years from now, Jesus. you can look back and see where you started. Mm-hmm. But if you're not in his plan, you might be still stuck at the very point you messed up. That's a mic drop moment right there, man. But uh, once again, uh, on Focus Radio, uh, special guest with us today, Crystal Davidson, uh, Brandon White Green. I want to say thank y'all for doing this because I always try, <clears throat> try to keep it simple because uh, that's all we try and do here. Not trying to be deep, just trying to be real. So if you enjoy this, I hope you share it with someone that uh, used the inspiration. But the main thing, topic, who told you this, man? Because if you spend your whole life trying to do it your way, at the end, you'll be on a dead end street. And you thought the whole time that you was going to be the big shot. But you did it your way. But if you're hearing this right now, you can switch up. And uh, let God take the plans that he already prepared for you. And your story can be the best story that people read. Because you chose... Like Pastor Green said, the point where you turn versus the point of no return. But we get to choose which one we want to to cross. I hope it's not the point of no return. I'm in Focus Radio. Good night. Refocus Radio is brought to you by Foo Four Star and Holy Crab. Foo Four Star is a family-owned Asian restaurant in San Antonio, Texas. We have been a local favorite for Asian cuisine for over 10 years. With nothing but full smiles and fast service, you'll be leaving satisfied. Come on in for some authentic Vietnamese food. Holy Crab is one of a kind Cajun Creole-style seafood restaurant located in Universal City, Texas. We offer traditional seafood items as well as chicken and steak. We also offer seafood boils. Come give us a try. You won't be disappointed. You can find these two eateries in Universal City, Texas at 2921 Pat Booker Road.